Davy has, or Davy, however you pronounce it. Hey guys, he writes in. Dutch, if you started a wrestling company today and you could choose between Jim Cornette, Eric Bischoff, or Vince Russo as a creative partner, which one do you hire or fire or use as a one-off ratings grabber? Thank you. So Jim Cornette, (laughs) Eric Bischoff, or Vince Russo? Well, first of all, I don't think I don't think I could take Cornette because he's too hot tempered. And he's making too much money off his podcast now to even consider going back and wrestling. I think it gives him a headache. Oh, okay. Let's say let's say they all need the money and they haven't got any other income. So let's let's <clears throat> keep him on an even keel there. Well, Cornette has a history of going off and just pitching a fit. Of course, ne- never at me. He's never done it at me. But I've seen him go off and scream and holler, and he has high blood pressure anyway. And I've settled him down a few times in Smoky Mountain when he, he got mad at some guy about pulling the cord. And I, I brought that up here before. But I, he was, he gets red and looks like he's going to explode. I said, Jimmy, calm down. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, about Vince. You know, you can only get <clears throat> called, hey, bro, <laughs> so many times in a day. <clears throat> and hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, you know. I don't think I could take Vince and some of his ideas aren't bad, but Hey bro, Hey bro, Hey bro. I couldn't take that. And, uh, and Bischoff, I can't think of any, any negative things to say about him, but I think he would, he's good at realizing. I think angles are good instead of inventing them. So I would probably, but I got to pick one. Let's say, okay, then. So personality-wise, okay, let's have two on. Personality-wise, who could you get on with the best? And if you didn't have to deal with the personalities, who has the best ideas long-term? I don't think none of them, really. <laughs> I mean, you, <laughs> but see, they had to book under different rules. They didn't book long-term. They booked. Four weeks in advance is what they did. That's the way that that's the system they grew up. Now they have a creative team in WWE that knows exactly where they're going to be for the next year. Let's say October the 12th, 95, uh, 2025. Where are we? And look it up. Oh, we're in Chicago. Okay. And they know exactly, and almost not, they don't know exactly the matches they're going to put in, but they got it blocked out quarterly. What's going to, what's going to be the main event. And they're going to work around that unless somebody, and the only thing that throws a wrench in that is somebody gets hurt badly where they got to miss a month, two months that throws all your plans, but it's easily correctable. You just got to put somebody else in that spot. So I would take a cornet, I think because he has more of a working knowledge of it. And I would probably take uh, Bischoff next, because I could probably get along with him. And, hey, bro, <laughs> Vince, I'd have to I'd have to see if I could work him in third somewhere. <laughs> right. Okay. Let me give you these things then. So you tell me if I'm way off base, but from what I gather, Jim Cornette's probably the best booker in the old school way. He's also behind the times and he's got his biases. Too many biases, most likely, for this day yep. and age. Vince Russo has no long-term vision. So he'll just come up with an idea and then he'll come up with another idea and then another idea and then it leads to a barbed wire Christmas tree and a coffin that raises to the fucking ceiling. Yeah. Eric Bischoff isn't a creative... He's never been a booker, really. So he's got absolutely no history of actually booking wrestling. So I don't even know why Eric Bischoff's sort of in this company, I guess, in this sense. So we agree. Basically. No, did I did I did I pitch uh a Bischoff second? You pitch yeah, you pitch Bischoff second. We Yeah, sh- but he but but he knows this this thing about Bischoff, he can hear, I think he can hear an idea and tell you whether it has any legs or not. Mm. I think, but also, but when, hell, and but hell, instead of hiring him, why don't I just why don't I just go out in the crowd and get a fan and say, listen, 
I'm gonna give you. <laughs> I'm gonna give you these three possible choices. Tell me which one you like best. Uh, number three. Okay, three it is. Take off. Go. On. And don't tell me. Don't tell anybody you were back here. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Yeah, here's a free T-shirt and up, tickets. The guy's gonna come up to me later. And say, I'm glad you told me not to tell anybody that I was back here. That was a shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, right. The brief times Russo and Bischoff have worked together, they came back into WCW as sort of co-creative people in 2000, April 2000, and they came up with the Millionaires versus the New Blood Feud, which I contend killed WCW more than anything else as far as career. Worse than David Arquette, worse than Vince Russo as champion. It was the worst, most fan, sorry, interest-killing uh, storyline in the world. So when Russo and uh, when Russo and Bischoff get together, it's basically nothing but a disaster creatively. I think. Same with TNA. I mean, what what was great in twenty eleven and twenty twelve? Nothing. Listen, I always when I booked, because I didn't book anything as big as WWE. I booked like small companies, but I didn't want any help. I did, I just needed a a video guy. Just do that. And I had a great video guy in Puerto Rico because he'd put all these musical videos together. This is back when you could use current music. Oh, he did some great stuff. And But I didn't want anybody to say, well, I don't think that'll work. I don't want to why. I, I told people one time, I don't want to hear why it won't work. I want one reason why it will work. Tell me that. And let's, let's be positive about that. But I don't want to go into a room and I went in a room with TNA, and they'd have like eight people sitting around a table. None of them, most of them, without any wrestling experience whatsoever. They weren't even writers. I don't even know what they were. One time they had me sitting around a table, and she was the she was like the, the, the front desk receptionist. And she was sitting there. Then another guy saying, Well, I think, and I said, I don't want to, I don't give a goddamn what you think. I said, for the rest of this meeting, I want you to sit there and not say a word. I said, you're just sitting here because you work for the company, not because you have any wrestling experience. So don't waste my time. And after that was over, he went and stooged me off to Dixie. And Dixie said, Dutch, can I talk to you a moment? And I said, yes. She said, uh, James came in and told me that you yelled at him in the meeting. I said, James, the front of whatever he did. She said, yeah. I said, yeah, I did yell at him. And I said, because back in, I'm not I'm gonna do more than yell at him. I'm gonna throw him out of the meeting. So I don't know how he got now now who assigned him to sit in on this meeting, but he is not welcome anymore. And, and that's one of the few times that I kind of kind of got a little rough with, with Dixie. And she said, Oh, okay, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so she went and told him, but hey, just because you work for a wrestling company don't mean you know. Wrestling. Just because you work for a shipping company don't mean to tell me you know how to drive a truck. So, but that was it because there's a lot of things you got to think. think wrestling, th just thinking about things like that. That's why I say keep it simple because you can outthink yourself out of business, period. Trying to say, well, the fans are going to react this way. Well, you don't know how they're going to react. You hope they react that way, but if they don't, well, it could be just a time loss and money spent. 